हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अ केस ऑफ रपचर्ड एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी दिस पेशेंट इज वेरी यंग पेशेंट सी हैज़ बीन मैरिड ओनली सिक्स मंथ एगो एंड आफ्टर दैट सी हैज स्टार्टेड सीवियर पेन इन द एबडोम एंड अल्ट्रासाउंड वॉज परफॉर्म एंड देर वॉज अ राइट साइडेड रपचर एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी एज यू नो दैट रपचर एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी इज इमरजेंसी वी हैव टू परफॉर्म द सर्जरी फास्टर and because the blood collected inside may create the shock initially patient look normal but if you will delay it patient may go to irreversible shock so this is the camera we are planning to put the camera supra pubic because uh, there may be blood inside and in those situation once you will introduce it then it may be necessary to do the procedure with a little distance from the telescope this is right hand port and this is left hand port these are the port we are planning to do ipsilateral and if it is required then later you can do one contralateral so it is according to baseball diamond concept and we will do the access with the various needle although open technique may be performed but open technique take little more time so in those situation because it's an emergency so you can use the various needle technique just a small stab wound will be given and this is the for the camera port we will give approximately 5 cm above the umbilicus although you can do with the umbilicus itself because it's not a very big trophoblast beta hcg is 15000 international unit and it's already ruptured so blood is collecting and patient head should be generally in the supine position not head not down and not head up and now lifting the abdominal wall and you will point it perpendicular to the abdominal wall two click sound will be heard and after that immediately you can take a syringe and syringe will do the irrigation test suction test and hanging drop test as usual irrigation suction hanging drop to make it sure that you are inside the abdomen sometime in the large ectopic pregnancy few drop of blood also can come in the syringe so you should not consider that it is in the aorta or vena cava now the gas will be introduced and you will start pneumoperitoneum and the pneumoperitoneum takes little time because the blood inside collected may take some of the space so you have to be careful here flow rate is kept uh, at 1 liter per minute initially and preset pressure we will keep 15 so this is the view of the insufflator you can see that preset pressure is kept to the 15 and slowly the flow rate is increasing and uh, flow rate we are keeping 1 liter per minute and now the actual pressure is increasing right now 0.9 liter gas has gone in and actual pressure is 8 so it is very good because initially for few minutes always the actual pressure should be single digit for initial part that means it is going in the abdominal cavity if initially only within 5 minutes if you go double digit that means you are not in the abdominal cavity you are in the preperitoneum and if initially only it stops that means you are in rectus so we can see actual pressure is 10 and after 1 liter of the gas you can increase the flow rate to 3 liter per minute and even if you will put 3 liter per minute the various needle eye of the various needle will not allow the gas to go more than 2.5 liter per minute but for safer side you should not go more than that otherwise there may be air embolism so now we can see this 15 is achieved and as soon as 15 is achieved then slowly you will see that actual flow rate which is on the right lower corner will become zero so total 2.1 liter gas has gone in and you have a now homogeneous distension you can see all around and now various needle will be taken out after that you can take a knife and you can enlarge the incision so this is 11 number knife and it is in enlarging the incision to 11 mm because outer diameter of the trochar is 11 mm so it should be given the incision and after that you can take and only a skin should be cut no rectus no muscle only a skin <coughs> and then you can use the trochar and you can hold it like a pistol head of the trochar will be over the thinar eminence and by a screwing movement you will try to enter into the abdominal cavity these all the activities should be little fast because in those patients there is a little chance of uh, already bleeding is inside so you should do it faster and by a screwing movement you will enter inside the abdomen now once the trochar is in after that telescope will be introduced you can clean the cannula and you tip off the cannula so that the telescope tip should not be stained 
and by the time your assistant will do the white balancing and focusing tubing of the insufflator should be again attached and flow rate can be increased to 10 liter per minute sometime in the cases of ectopic pregnancy when you have to do the irrigation and suction at that time you may increase the flow rate further so this is how the telescope is white balancing and focusing at the distance of 10 cm is done and now the telescope is inside once you have the telescope in then you can do the initial diagnostic laparoscopy and you can just under vision you can put the second and third port so here we will use baseball diamond concern luckily after going inside it was seen that there is no much blood it was just little blood so <clears throat> this is your target target is in the mid midpoint and this is right side ectopic but we can bring it to the midline so target is in the middle and here is the baseball diamond concept and this is 18 18 cm and there is one snuff box is one port another snuff this is 18 18 and this is 24 telescope is at 24 and instrument should be 18 cm from the target because your instrument length is 36 cm and the 18 is the half of the length of the instrument and after that you will put 2 5 mm port this is the right hand port and then another left hand port so you can have the better ambidextrity and these ports are usually sufficient for perform the ectopic pregnancy surgery so this is again 7.5 cm lateral we have the other port that is for left hand and this is also just uh, medial and above the anterior superior iliac spine depending upon the target if there is a big uh, a big uh, chronic ectopic or big ovarian cyst then of course we put it little above but here it is a small rupture ectopic so this is the other port so all the ports are in the position and after that we will enter inside and start doing the surgery so this is all is done and here initially you will just move it all the small bubbles should be move up here it the uh, we can see this is the cardiac monitor pulse of the patient was 120 that pulse was because the patient has tachycardia the reason of the tachycardia is the bleeding inside and this active bleeding it will be there so immediately we should do suction irrigation you can see all over blood is there and patient head is down so that's why in the pelvis there is less blood almost all the blood is getting collected into the upper abdomen so immediately irrigation and suction shaking of the suction will clean the uterus anterior cul-de-sac posterior cul-de-sac you can see here again the tachycardia 120 is the pulse of the patient although oxygen saturation is fine so in those situation you should be faster once you will do faster then you can have the better prognosis of these patients although we can see this is the right side of ruptured ampullary pregnancy you can hold it with a grasper and then anti uh, anterior medial traction should be given this is antero medial traction and after that you can start uh, giving the traction towards the anterior abdominal wall and medial and with the left hand you can hold the grasper and right hand with the harmonic you will start cutting the tube and that will be done from lateral to medial here this is a infundibulo ovarian ligament infundibulo pelvic ligament should not be touched because if you touch the infundibulo pelvic ligament always there is a chance of devascularization of the ovary so to prevent it anteromedial traction will be done and faster faster you should try to separate the tube keeping it as near as possible now you can see now the pulse is going down and slowly the pulse is going down because now the bleeding has stopped because already you have stopped the blood supply and slowly it can in decrease and by the time the anesthetist will do fast infusion of the fluid that also will make the pulse down so it is now slowly slowly the entire tube is cut medially you can just coagulate 5 mm or 6 mm of the tube to prevent the utero peritoneal fistula it is important to coagulate the medial aspect of the tube and after that you can cut it out so this was a simple case because luckily there were no clots inside and it was a freshly ruptured ectopic pregnancy in ectopic pregnancy you should try your best that you should perform it as soon as possible delaying the procedure is risky because patient may be compensating 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 and then immediately patient can go to the irreversible shock so this is now finally coagulated and this is the tube after coagulating 6 mm from the uterus to seal it nicely and then tube is cut and then this is over after that we can take a endo bag 
and this is a commercially available endo bag which we are using here this is the commercially available endo bag you can open the endo bag it has a self retaining metal ring that metal ring will make it make it self retaining you don't need any grasper to hold it and it has a wide mouth so you can put the any size like up to b size but means up to the bladder size you can put it here so the entire this trophoblast together with the tube and it will kept into the endo bag and then you can close the mouth of the endo bag because it has a like a purse string so it will automatically close and then you can keep on taking it out so in many cases of the rupture ectopic pregnancy these endo bags make it sure that it will during removal it will not rupture other cases you can use gloves also or some people they use condom some people they use the simple you know the nasogastric tube covering of the plastic and some people they make the their own endo bag and they use it but this is a endo catch from auto suture so this is very good and now slowly it is taking out and once it is out after that you will inspect the entire pelvis to check for and then patient uh, head should be further down and then you will do the lavage in the upper abdomen here we can see morrison's pouch has a lot of blood because throughout the surgery patient head was down so you have a lot of blood collected into the diaphragmatic area morrison's pouch splenic fossa and this area also should must be washed out if will not wash this area then uh, post operatively there is a chance of the sub diaphragmatic abscess because the blood as we know it is irritant and sometime it act as a culture medium for bacteria to grow so immediately we should try to clean those area this is the right lobe of the liver and diaphragm and then again the splenic fossa any surgery any pelvic surgery when we do and we have a bleeding then in those situation upper abdominal cleaning is necessary although here there was no bleeding but it was a rupture ectopic which has created already this collected blood sometime if you have a clot in those area you can use hyperinized saline that is 5000 international unit of hyperin should be diluted with the 500 ml of normal saline and then you can clear your clots so now again coming to the pelvis and again at this side patient head should be up so that again all the blood will collected to the pelvis that is anterior morrison spouch then posterior this is the anterior caldi sac then posterior caldi sac all will be washed out and sometime you may at the end of the surgery you may leave 200 300 ml of the blood of the fluid to prevent adhesion and here there is no drain is used because there was no any active bleeding and it was a thorough lavage so drain should not be required and this is now the end of the procedure so thank you very much for watching this video this was a simple case of the rupture ectopic pregnancy thank you and i have a nice day god bless you